Reported interest and reactions from WWE, Impact Wrestling, and New Japan Pro Wrestling in CM Punk after his exit from AEW after he was terminated last weekend. Details in that, plus Christopher Daniels, the head of AEW's talent relations, defends AEW's chief legal officer, Mega Parekh, after accusations from Jim Cornette in a recent podcast. Details in that, plus we got the ratings for last Friday's episode of SmackDown. Von Wagner took a big hit to the head as NXT closed out in shocking fashion last night. We'll let you know about that. Becky Lynch has confirmed her return to NXT. She's going to be challenging for the NXT Women's Championship next week. We've got the ratings for last Friday's episode of Rampage on TNT for AEW. LA Knight is seen as the top babyface internally on SmackDown now, according to recent reports. Dominic Mysterio has found out his challenger for the NXT North American Championship at NXT No Mercy. Zoe Stark is receiving internal praise in WWE. The Grand Slam title eliminator tournament quarterfinal matches have been announced. An NXT Championship number one contendership match has also been announced and Dakota Kai gives an update on her injury recovery. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling, and you saw it with that intro. We've got plenty to get into in today's show. So let's start off talking about CM Punk, his future in professional wrestling, and which promotions are talking about him, the reaction internally in these various promotions, as well as the interest in the former AEW world champion. With CM Punk's time in AEW having reached an acrimonious end, many are wondering what is next for the two-time AEW world champion with some wondering if he could wind up back at WWE another promotion or if he would once again disappear as he did following his WWE departure in 2014 at least a few days removed from his AEW exit, there appears that there is some interest in Punk popping back up somewhere else. PW Insider is reporting that Punk has become a topic of discussion within WWE and was a topic of discussion as soon as he was fired, and the response has been pretty divided. While some in WWE look at it as the chance for the promotion to make a lot of money, with one top talent even going as far to endorse the idea, many were said to be against it and didn't believe it would happen. However, it turns out Punk joining WWE would be a discussion save for later as the promotion is currently focused on finalizing its merger with Endeavor, set to be completed this month. It is also believed that Endeavor themselves would make the call to sign CM Punk if indeed that prospect did actually happen. Of course, Punk had previously worked for Endeavor when he competed in UFC and is said to have had a good relationship with the top Endeavor brass. As far as other promotions, Impact Wrestling was also said to be interested in CM Punk, though it's unclear if they were able to be, uh, if they were able to afford him, something considered a potential issue for other promotions that may also have interest in the former AEW World Champion. As far as New Japan Pro Wrestling, it is believed the promotion would not pursue CM Punk due to their relationship with AEW. It's further believed that Punk was released without a non-compete clause, which would allow him to sign anywhere at any time, although as of right now, that's not confirmed. So what are your thoughts on the latest reports that whilst there are quite a few that are against CM Punk returning to WWE. It is thought that once the merger between UFC and WWE is complete under the Endeavor umbrella, the chances of Punk returning suddenly get much more likely and higher because of CM Punk's relationship and past work with Endeavor whilst he was in UFC. Let me know your thoughts about that, as always, in the comments section below. Now, this is always a fascinating story when it comes to Jim Cornette, and it's been a tumultuous week regarding CM Punk. Last weekend at AEW All In, Punk was involved in yet another backstage altercation. However, this one would be different than those in the past in various ways. Namely, Punk not only fought with Jack Perry, but he also reportedly lunged at AEW President Tony Khan while furiously quitting the company. These events would leave Khan with no other choice but to fire the former AEW World Champion with cause, despite Punk's drawing power and status as the company's real world champion. Punk has yet to comment on the matter. Jim Cornette, however, believes that Punk was set up by AEW management, namely Chief Legal Officer Mega Parekh, who he accused of throwing, quote, stumbling blocks in the way of CM Punk. Cornette explained on Cornette's drive through whilst also indicating that he believes that Mega has had liaisons with some AEW talent. He said, quote, well, so Tony finally made a decision. You think? I thought whoever really calls the shots over there is the one that would make a decision this big. I'm thinking because Mega Parekh is over there. She's been involved in this since the start because she was the one or one of the people that burst into his CM Punk's locker room along with the buckaroos and their ilk 
and started the whole goddamn deal a year ago. And we know that Mega is close to the Bucks, not as close as she has been to some of the boys. She has been the one that was screwing up contracts because she's in charge of the AW Legal, trying to throw stumbling blocks in the way of bringing Punk back, with messing around with Ace Steel's employment and etc. She's the one who's been trying to collect evidence for her friends, the Buckaroos, all along. And she's the one who I'm sure had a big hand in whatever other appendage she wanted to put in, in wording this so that a jury, when the lawsuit eventually happens, will go, oh my god, Tony was so scared. Tony was so scared the night that he saw his first fight. It was traumatizing for the boy. Now, obviously, this has led to a lot of people suggesting that this could lead to a potential lawsuit for Jim Cornette, uh, defamation, etc., slander. Mega Prec, of course, has been present for much of the CM Punk drama for a good reason and was the lead on the investigation into Punk prior to his firing with cause. So obviously, as I mentioned, this led to a lot of people speculating that Jim Cornette may have overstepped the line when it comes to his accusations regarding Mega Prec. He doubled down on social media and said the following. You can see it on the screen right there. Uh, when someone said, yes, the smartest thing Jim Cornette could do is spread lies about the chief legal officer of the Jaguars and AEW. That's 100% a smart decision and couldn't backfire at all. Cornette quote tweeted this and said quote, if anyone thinks I lied about anybody they can sue me and will work it out in discovery when everyone's under oath and telling the truth for once. Christopher Daniels, the AEW head of talent relations, though, pushed back on this and couldn't take it anymore. He said, I've kept my mouth shut about a lot of things in this past year, but the unsubstantiated garbage I've read in the past day about AEW's chief legal officer is an embarrassment to anyone spouting it. Absolutely the last person who should be maligned in this situation. So what are your thoughts on this Jim Cornette story? What are your thoughts on his accusations? What are your thoughts on the response of both Christopher Daniels and Jim Cornette to them? Let me know your thoughts about this, as always, in the comment section below. Now let's switch gears here and talk about SmackDown WWE because SmackDown delivered big ratings, although a decline from the week prior, which was expected. The September 1st episode of SmackDown saw a 5% drop in its viewership from the prior week. According to WrestleNomics, the episode was watched by an average of 2.443 million viewers overall. The week prior, the August 25th episode drew 2.581 million total viewers, the highest of the year so far, but there was a reason for that. We'll get into that shortly. Looking at the key demographic, which is the people aged between 18 to 49 years old. Last Friday's episode scored uh, or drew rather 848,000 viewers drawing a 0.65 rating. That is down 15% from the prior week's 0.76 rating, although as I mentioned, it's as expected because the August 25th episode featured tributes to the late Wyndham Rotunda, formerly known as Bray Wyatt, and Terry Funk as well. Last Friday's episode, which was the Payback Go Home show, included the return of John Cena. His last WWE appearance was back on July 1st at the Money in the Bank Premium Live event where Grace Moller confronted him and Cena ended up giving him an attitude adjustment. During this past Friday's episode, Cena started off the show by confronting another star Jimmy Uso, while The Miz and LA Knight had a segment before their payback match, which Knight ended up winning, with Cena being the special guest referee. Also, Damage Control's Bailey lost to Shotzi, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn were in action against the Latino World Order, and in the main event, Solo Sokoa defeated AJ Styles. So what are your thoughts on the ratings, and will they continue to be strong now that Cena's back in the fold, at least for the foreseeable future? Now, we've got to talk about NXT last night because the show closed with an absolutely incredible segment that many people are talking about today on social media. Talk about a cliffhanger ending. On last night's NXT, one star took it way too far in his post-match attack after the main event. Despite the live TV feed cutting to black, the events in front of the live crowd continued to play out and commentary could still be heard commenting on the brutality. After beating Von Wagner in a no-disqualification match on last night's NXT, Bron Breaker didn't stop there. Breaker took it a step further when he was seen setting Von Wagner up for what appeared to be him about to smash Wagner's head with the steel steps. As you may recall, Von Wagner's ongoing storyline and babyface turn had uncovered his childhood adversity due to being born with a medical condition that required him to have surgery on his skull at only 15 months old, leading to a prominent forehead which was the subject of bullying as a child. At any rate, given his skull being an in-storyline sensitive area, it appears Breaker targeted that in the post-match attack that occurred when the show cut to black just as Breaker and the steps seemed to make impact with Wagner's skull. Stylized as if production had to cut to black to avoid the carnage, commentary did a great job with Booker T, Baron Corbin and Vic Joseph dropping integral lines. The show remained black screened until the broadcast was over. 
After the taping officially ended, the live crowd in attendance saw the scene continue to unfold as Shawn Michaels came to ringside with concern. Next, Von Wagner was stretched out to the performance center ringside area, seen with what could be uh, blood on his forehead, draped in a gauze. You can see the pictures on the screen right now of people that are actually in attendance posting this. So they did do a very intensive and thorough angle after the show. What did you make of this? How effective do you think it was? Um, what do you think it's going to lead to next? Is it going to lead to Bron Breaker getting suspended from NXT, maybe going up to the main roster? Is it the next step of Von Wagner's babyface turn? Let me know your thoughts all about it in the comment section below. Absolutely fascinating stuff. Now, next week, we'll see the return of Becky Lynch to NXT to try and win the championship she's never won before in WWE. After misspeaking during a promo and naming Becky Lynch as one of the greatest NXT Women's Champions of all time, despite Lynch never actually winning the championship, Tiffany Stratton will be defending her NXT Women's Championship against the man in the main event of next week's episode on USA Network. After defeating Kiana James to kick off Tuesday's episode, Stratton was surprised when Lynch appeared on the entrance stage screen. Lynch said she decided to make an appearance on NXT after Stratton made, Stratton made her presence known on an episode of Raw when Lynch faced Zoe Stark and again in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania during the Payback Premium Live event where Stratton was seen ringside for Lynch's cage match against Trish Stratus. Lynch said while she's won most accolades in WWE, she indeed never won the NXT Women's Championship. She said she thinks it's time for the man to come around to NXT and challenged Stratton to a match. The match was later made official on the NXT social media accounts. Later in the episode of NXT, Stratton responded to Lynch's challenge and said it would be the biggest match of her career. She's only been in the business two years thus far and already has accomplished so much. You may be big time Bex in your world, but I'm the center of the universe in mind, Stratton said of Lynch's challenge. Where do you think this one is going to go? Could Becky Lynch win the championship she's never won before next week on NXT? And is she going to be the latest main roster star that has Nick extended stay on the black and gold brand we got the ratings as well for Rampage, switching to AEW last Friday on TNT. Now, the viewership figure and key demo rating for Friday, September 1st episode of AEW Rampage on TNT has been revealed. Per Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics, Rampage drew 372,000 viewers. This is up from the August 25 edition that drew 348,000 viewers. But this marks the second straight week and a six of the, ni six of the last nine episodes to be below 400,000 viewers. In the key 1849 demographic, Friday's episode scored a 0.11 rating. This is the same as the week prior that also scored the same rating. The show featured the Dark Order's John Silver and Alex Reynolds winning the Ring of Honor Tag Team Battle Royale to face MJF and Adam Cole for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles at All Out. Also, Hangman Page defeated Brian Keith and Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale defeated Ty Valkyrie and Anna Jay in the main event. So those are the ratings for Rampage on TNT for last week. Now, how does WWE view LA Knight on SmackDown internally right now? Well, the answer is pretty good. Uh, LA Knight has drastically risen in popularity, of course, over the last several months. The former Million Dollar Champion is definitely a fan favorite, but how does WWE now view him? Well, WrestleVotes has now provided an update on the talent board used internally following the payback event on September 2nd, noting that Knight is now viewed as the number one babyface on SmackDown. WrestleVotes tweeted, quote, the latest talent board, which is used internally, saw an update post payback on September 3rd. Interesting news from the SmackDown side lists LA Knight as the top babyface. Knight was in action at Payback, defeating The Miz in singles action. The bout was notably officiated by John Cena, who served as the special guest referee. Cena is slated to return to the ring at Friday's Superstar Spectacle event, ahead of his appearances on every episode of SmackDown through the end of October. So LA Knight certainly viewed as a big-time star by WWE internally right now. Going back to NXT, we have a new number one contender for the NXT North American Championship. Dominic Mysterio's next opponent for his NXT North American Championship has been set and the title match will be taking place at the next NXT Premium Live event, No Mercy. During this past Tuesday's episode of NXT, Mustafa Ali defeated Dragon Lee in a number one contenders match. Mysterio was also the special guest referee, and it was no secret that he didn't want Lee to get the match. As can be seen during the broadcast, Mysterio quickly counted for Ali to win with a roll-up, though after the match, Ali actually attacked Dirty Dom. Mysterio has been the NXT North American Champion since defeating Wes Lee on the July 18 edition of NXT. His last title defense was against Lee on the August 8 episode of the show. No Mercy is set to take place on September 30 and will be taking place at the Mechanics Bank Arena in Bakersfield, California. So the next title match confirmed for Dirty Dom. 
Zoe Stark's been receiving a lot of praise on social media and from fans, but also internally from officials alike. According to Sean Rossap of Fightful Select, Zoe Stark has made a great impression early on in WWE. Just over two years after signing with the company, Stark found herself called up to the Raw brand and in a program with WWE Hall of Famer Trish Stratus and WrestleMania main eventer Becky Lynch, during which she picked up a victory over the man. Those that Fightful have spoken to say that Stark has been getting great reviews from talent she's worked with on the main roster, in addition to several backstage for how she's handled herself since the call-up and the duties associated with it. Fightful are told that WWE had their eye on her pretty early on and she gained praise for her resilience in returning from her knee injury and not missing a beat in the ring. WWE soon after made sure to get multiple looks at her on main events where she got good reviews internally and helped lead her for a Royal Rumble appearance. Fightful are told that not after, not long after the Royal Rumble appearance, she was slated for a call-up to the main roster. By March, NXT was told to wrap up her run there. So she's already been getting high praise internally within WWE. Now let's go back to AEW because matches have been announced for the next number one contender title tournament for the World Championship. AEW has announced matches for the Grand Slam World Title Eliminator Tournament quarterfinals set for Dynamite on September 6th, that being tonight. Announced in a backstage segment after All In by MJF himself, the Grand Slam World Title Eliminator Tournament will see a series of matches with the winner getting a title shot at MJF's AEW World Heavyweight Championship at AEW Grand Slam. On AEW social media accounts, two matches in the quarterfinals were announced as Trent Beretta will take on Roderick Strong as well as Darby Allin taking on pal Nick Wayne in the tournament. Roderick Strong, for his part, has continued his vow to end of heartache after his friendship breakup with Adam Cole that now sees his former bestie Cole as current besties with AEW World Champion MGF. So many besties and so much Roddy heartache, but only one triple B as MGF will be putting his AEW World Championship on the line against someone in just two weeks' time. The annual AEW Grand Slam event hails from Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York and is a marquee edition of Dynamite and will also include a taping for AEW Rampage at the September 20 event. Do you think we could possibly see Roderick Strong versus MJF for the AEW World Championship at the event? Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. Going back to NXT, a number one contenders match has been announced for the NXT Championship 2. Carmelo Hayes' NXT title defense has been confirmed on last night's episode of NXT. After Ilya Dragunov had picked up a victory over Oro Mensa, he was interrupted by Wesley who said it should be him who gets a rematch against Hayes for the NXT Championship and not Dragunov. However, Hayes himself then came out and informed the pair that he had approached Shawn Michaels regarding the plans for the next title shots. Hayes revealed that Wesley and Ilya Dragunov would have a match against each other on next week's episode of NXT with the winner moving forward to a title shot against him at NXT No Mercy. Of course, it's always possible the match could end, actually end up being a three-way given how the storyline has played out with a possible non-finish to the match next week. But as it was announced, the winner will be getting a title shot. So who do you think wins or are we getting a triple threat match? Finally, Dakota Kai has given an update on her injury status after she returned to the road on WWE television. WWE SmackDown superstar Dakota Kai shared an injury update Monday via her Twitch channel. Kai is healing from a torn ACL that occurred on the May 17 edition of SmackDown when she and Bailey were in action against the then women's tag team champions Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez. A week after the incident, Kai underwent surgery. Quote, probably 2024, actually, Kai answered after she was asked when she'd be resting again. I do think it's funny that a lot of people are like, she's not injured at all. Look at her walking around. ACL injury, it's, I haven't even learned how to jump and run again yet. I think I'm going to start running this week. ACL recovery, especially for someone that is in sport or something like that, when you use your legs a lot. If I was a desk worker or something like that, I would be back to work probably like fully now. But because it's wrestling, I won't be clearing until January. Kai later told her fans that, well, she, it seems like a long way from now when she'll be back in the ring. Time is actually going pretty fast, noting how she already has her 2024 calendar up. So she's saying that she'll be back by January. So that's the latest update when it comes to her injury status. But there you go, guys. This is the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash the like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.